Okay, let's solve this question and visit together. Uh, please concentrate. Let's see what is happening here. See, we already have discussed about discrete uniform distribution, correct? Uniform distribution is what I already have explained you about the uniform distribution, whereby uh, you see the probabilities are same for all the outcomes, correct? Uh, yes. A very good example can be this diagram, but this is continuous uniform distribution, correct? And yes. if I say about discrete uniform distribution, I say outcomes when we throw a die, I already have explained. Like we get outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the probability is 1 by 6. So this all are having the same probabilities. Okay, so taking this into picture, let's understand this question. So determine probability of getting 6. And this is like uh, from the perspective of uh, like uh, probability that X will take some specific value X. Okay. Uh, probability normal like probability mass you can say mass function or whatever this is cumulative distribution uh, function correct this is for cumulative uh, distribution am i right yeah. this is general probability function this is cumulative distribution function uh, probability we need to find so that we denote with capital f and we also have to see that the x the random variable lies between 2 and 8 okay so we have to determine these three things for the discrete uniform distribution function defined as probability of x is equal to 0 0.2 okay and these are the random variables now see whatever random variable comes here that means either 2 or 4 or 6 the probability is what 0 0.2 am i right yeah so probability of 6 also is going to be 0 0.2 probability of x 0 0.2 for all x that means for any value of x the probability is 0 0.2 and the cumulative distribution function you already know what is what does it say it says like what uh, will be the probability of you getting some uh, values less than equal to 6 or what the what value x can take less than equal to 6 am i right yeah that's what we discussed. So x this this will take some specific value, normal probability. X will take some value less than or equal to six. Cumulative distribution. Now, normal probability distribution, cumulative distribution. Now, n into probability of x. So we are speaking about expected value. Am I right? What's the yes. formula for expected value, Abhij? Expected value is equal to number of whatever the outcomes you see into the probability of that outcome. Correct. That yeah. will give you expected value, isn't it so? Yes. So like uh, um, like n, see probability of x being less than equal to 6, there are how many numbers? Three numbers? Probability of x, yeah, that, including 6, yes. Yeah, of course, that is equal to 6, no? So oh. 2, 4, 6, so three numbers. And uh, the probability is already given to you. So. 60% of the data lies between uh, like lies less than equal to uh, 6. Am I right? Yeah. That's what it means, correct? So uh, note that n is equal to 3 since 6 is the third outcome and we have already have discussed. And if it is between uh, like uh, 2 and 8, there are four numbers you can take 2, 4, 6, 8 and into the probability 0 0.8, correct? So we understood the probabilities also. Am I right? No. So because uh, we, this is the 60% chance, that's what it says, 60% chances that X will lie uh, like uh, below 6 or it will be equal to 6, 80% chances that X will lie between these two. Now, since there are four outcomes in range, already we have discussed, not, nothing to discuss about that. So these are the X will take some specific values. The probabilities are given, normal probability, CDF distribution function you know already like you take 20 then you take the previous one also with the current one and then previous with current and then 80 percent we got correct and when we make a graph here you see uh, when it is 2 it takes 20 percent of the data and uh, when it is 4 it takes 40 percent 6 60 80 and 100 percent and then it cannot take anything more than that because this is the final correct yeah forward now Same thing we will discuss with the continuous uniform distribution, whereby we can't count the uh, numbers. Okay, 
we count we can't count the observations here because in a in a particular range it can take infinite values so the continuous uniform distribution is defined over a range range of some we we put some upper bound and lower bound this is called a range that spans between some lower limit a and upper limit b which serve as parameters of the distribution so these are the parameters of the distribution okay outcomes can only occur between these two a and b so any outcome which has to come has to come between these two uh, more like confidence interval which you are going to learn in the coming next page and since we are dealing with a continuous distribution even if x lies between a and b probability of x being x is zero why hello yeah hello yeah abhijit what does it what, say so you asked a question no i asked a question uh -huh. outcomes can only occur between a and b and since we are dealing with a continuous distribution if even if x lies between a and b the probability that random variable x will be some specific value x is zero that means zero chances that it will take some value it's a Why? continuous no? sorry it's a continuous distribution no? you continuous don't have distribution and it can have infinite values okay yeah, uh, so some of the uh, like uh, you know like it taking some value so you know uh, some of the observations if i take s number of observations is infinite am i right hello yes sir yes sir i'm listening yeah, yeah so like uh, we can't we can't say that like any it will take any specific value and uh, taking a specific value the probability is almost zero formally the properties of continuous uniform distribution may be described as follows for all the x1 less than e uh, x1 which is greater than equal to a that means any value which will be more than this lower bound and x2 will be any value which will be less than the upper bound that means they can lie between these two only am i right yes and uh, probability of like the random variable being less than this lower bound and more than this is zero almost everyone knows that it cannot go outside the boundary correct outside the boundaries of probability okay and the random variable between these two you can only get with this formula that is the uh, that means it will be any value between x1 and x2 okay divided by the this can be the outcome outcome can be the difference correct and this can be the total outcome between that range am i right that is the formula for probability yes outcome by total outcomes is it so yes let's take the question x is uniformly distributed between 2 and 12 so can i say this is the range yes. this is the boundary lower bound upper bound yeah and uh, calculate the probability that the random variable x will be between 4 and 8 so they have given us x1 and x2 as well so between these two so i am going to take the difference 8 minus 4 by 12 minus 2 so 40% chances that the that the raw observation whatever you are looking for okay that lies between this two am i right yes so the figure below illustrates this continuous uniform distribution note that the area bounded by 4 and 8 is 40% of the total probability between 2 and 1200% that means 40% of the uh, like 40% chances that what they are asking uh, x will lie between 4 and 8 that's it out of 100% so this is what it is done and this also we can take as a cumulative distribution function already we have discussed about this now binomial random variable see when i speak about the term binomial i speak about two am i right and yes. i'm speaking about bernoulli's trial bernoulli's trial is something when you do a, perform an experiment there are only two outcomes in that one is success one is failure when you toss a coin there are only two outcomes head tail you assign some numbers to it 0 1 okay so that is bernoulli's trial correct it cannot give anything more than this final finish if you perform uh, like uh, if if i want to uh, like uh, perform an experiment and i want to check the success or failure it is bernoulli's trial if i want to perform 
like uh, some more number of trials. What is that? More number of trials. That means I want to do more Bernoulli trials. What I want to do? More number of Bernoulli trials. More number of Bernoulli trials and I want to check number of successes. Then comes binomial distribution. Am I right? Okay, okay. Very simple. Very simply I can explain the, the binomial distribution. If I toss one coin, I will check head or tail. If I toss that same coin five times and I want to check like what is the probability of getting three heads, then what kind of distribution I should check? What binomial. kind of distribution comes into picture? Binomial distribution. Binomial distribution. Okay. So one coin tossed once, head or tail, Bernoulli's trial. Number of Bernoulli's trial, that means the same experiment repeated five times, three heads or three tails or whatever you want, binomial distribution. And in that, in both the cases, there are only two outcomes. That is success. That is like uh, one is the success and one is the failure. That's it. So the formula for binomial distribution would be NCR or NCX, whatever you want, you can keep P power R into Q power N minus R. And P is the success and Q is the failure. Okay. Q can also be written as 1 minus P. Shall we move forward? Yeah. That's the probability that some random variable is going to take some value X. If you want to know that random variable taking some specific value x that means you tossed coin for five times and you want the probability of getting three heads yes. yeah, okay. yeah. so in that case you can use this but why are you using only this binomial distribution here because there are only two outcomes what do you expect that is success and failure that's the reason why we have taken this binomial distribution into picture so please do this question abhijit come on Achha, okay Okay. Oh, this is that NCX, no? Yeah, so okay. I one one more thing I'll write it here. So I'll explain the formula also. NCR N factorial by N minus R factorial into R factorial. So do you know the how to calculate this? Yeah. Okay. Probably by tomorrow, I'll wind up this chapter. Tomorrow is the last day if you are taking the class. Okay, Vijay. Then after, we'll move to sampling then. Sampling is one class. I think one class is enough for sampling. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's very simple. Hypothesis testing will take two sessions. Okay. And regression is the simplest one actually. I got the answer actually. OK, so this is like the answer. So the probability of you uh, like drawing how many black beans? Three black beans out of yes. five beans is 34%. OK, correct? Yeah. 34% chances. Okay. See, we will see the intuition behind this, Abhijit. I like understood that you understood the concept and everything. If you want, we can go with this intuition as well, if you are, if you require. Yeah. OK. Let's see this. Some intuition about these results may help you remember the calculations. Consider that a very large uh, black uh, bowl of black and white beans has 60% black beans. Uh, and that each time, that means there are, uh, in our question, they said like how many black beans we have? Three black beans, correct? Three black beans out of five. Because I didn't see the question you were solving, huh? so okay. And two white beans. So 40% of the this bowl, the bowl and uh, there are five beans. So 60% is occupied by the black beans and 20% uh, is occupied by the white beans. Okay. Sure. And uh, that each time you select a bean, you replace it in the ball before drawing again. That means you put it again, you take it replacing. So we want to know the probability of that's the reason why it's a very lengthy uh, like uh, experiment. So it's better to use the formula. That's what they want to say. So we 
uh, want to know the probability of selecting exactly three black beans in five draws as in the previous example. Okay. Okay. Now, one way this might happen is like you see this much three beans black and two white. Since the draws are independent, the probability of, of this is easy to calculate. The probability of drawing a black bean is 60%. Okay. And the probability of drawing a white bean is 40%. And uh, how like 60 percent? How you can get that? Can I say three yeah, out of five? Simple three out of five? Yeah, yeah. Simple probability. Now, yeah. so therefore the probability of selecting uh, like this in order is they have just multiplied all the probabilities. What is left over 3.456, correct? So that's what uh, like we uh, like uh, saw 34.56, but here the probability of selecting uh, these beans in order actually okay is the total this one this is uh, something p cube into 1 minus p square that is p power r into q power n minus r understood q is 1 minus p and the probability of setting black bean on any single draw from the ball is uh, b, b is not however the only way to choose exactly three black beans in five trials another possibility can be this I, this is in the series, it's, it's a sequence. You can choose in this way. You can go in this way. Each of these will have exactly the same probability of occurring uh, as our initial outcome. So uh, then what they say, that's why we need to answer question of how many ways there are for us to choose. So three black beans in five draws using the formula, 10 ways, what we got? Ten ways. And that will multiply with the probability, we'll get the total answer, correct? Okay. That means the the arrangements B B B W W, they oh. can arrange themselves in how many ways? Ten ways. If you, if you go, yeah, if you draw it like that, okay. So ten ways. That's what. So ten ways into the probability will give that. It will give us the answer, right? Yeah. Now we will do some example, and you have to solve this expected value question. Okay. Okay. This one, no, no, no I'm, I'm just doing something. See, like I'll give you a small example to find out the expected value and then give the def definition as well. See, what is this expected value? See, if you take 20 multiple choice questions, okay, there are 20 MCQs and there are four options A, B, C, D. Okay, and what did you do in the exam is you guessed all A. What is that? All is. All is. Like, and then you expect to get C. Uh, we sometimes what we do when we don't get, when we don't have time at the end, what we do is we put just one option and we expect what 25% of the options to be 25% of the uh, of, of the answers what you have like guessed to be right. Am I right? Yeah, that means five out of 20. That, oh. That's what you're expecting, am I right? Oh. So this is the math behind the expected value. OK, so what is the probability? 0 0.2, I mean 25 percent. And number of questions? 20 questions. So N P, what is the answer? 0 0.5. No, five now. Twenty-five percent of twenty is fine, Abhijit. Yeah, 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 sorry, my bad. So that is your expected value. Finished. Okay, make note of this example. Now you understood, now? Yeah. So. Expected value is exactly what do you think? Uh, like, if I have to put this, uh, the return you expect for some kind of action or result, correct? Yes.
So the action here is you guessing questions, you guessing the answers. You expect 25% of them to be right. So 25% uh, of the total questions is five. That means five answers would be right, correct? That is expected. Yeah. Finished, yeah, that's expected value. Uh, so let's go for the question and now you need to solve Abhijit. It's not my task. I'm done with that. The formula is here. And uh, variance is nothing but NP. You are also taking into consideration the failure. OK, N and the and, and P is what? The probability of success, correct? And Q is the probability of failure. So both of them, when they are together, there can be a variation. Am I right? Variability. Do this question. Understood, no, Abhiji? Yeah. And when you have multiple probabilities, what will be the formula of Ajit? Expected value is equal to summation of that observation into probability. Correct? Okay. For multiple. See, this in intermediate people you have studied now that random variable chapter. Oh, let me not. I'm not too sure. You don't remember. <laughs> okay, fine. No problem. Okay, take this now. Then I'll come to the question. So let's say if you have if you have kind of invested in some stocks and uh, over the five years, uh, like they are giving some returns. So you want to find out the expected value of those returns. So you will mm -hmm. take the returns every time into the probability what you expect what, probability of getting those returns. Correct. Yeah. OK, so for five years, so that means for if you do summation, you'll get for the five years. So for the first one, we need to uh, multiply the expected value of the increase into the number of days. That's five. Yeah. Yeah, so that's 335. Yeah, now you, you are solving this question, Amjit. Yeah, I just, yeah, I think I solved it. So, shall I explain this? No, 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 I solved it. No? Okay, fine, please explain. Yeah. So, based on empirical data, the probability that Dow Jones industrial average will increase on any given day has been determined by, uh, that means they are expecting this to happen, correct? This is the probability. Assuming that only other outcome is that it decreases we can so we can state the down probability correct yeah. further assume that the movements in the dow jones uh, index industrial average are independent asking for five days so the number of days into the probability will give you 3.35 that's expected uh, what this what is this expected expected value correct yes yes so the preceding statement is read as the expected value of X given N is going to find the probability of success is 3.35. So we should note that since the binomial distribution is discrete distribution, the result, this is not possible. However, if we were to record the results of many five day periods, the average number of number of up successes could converge to 3.35. That means it will come near to that. Okay. okay. Expected value means what? Mean, na? Then it, when probability is given to you and the observations are given to you. So you can see them some questions also, which you have to do them. Okay. Okay. Let's come into the normal distribution, the distribution which we always take as an example. Let's understand this very simply. See what is normal distribution? If I take some some number of students in a class or let's say we are in an area. We are closely looking to we are closely looking around us and we are look, watching many people over there. OK, we are excited about their heights. We are seeing that we see some people are very tall. Some are very short. Some are mid height. And then what crops up in our mind is why not? Let's put all those in a particular uh, like all this thing as a data and uh, uh, like uh, or like let's let's take that data and uh, let's distribute it normally so now the question comes what is this distributed normally see normal distribution is what it's a very simple distribution it has one average that is mean that is the average height correct yeah 
that there 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 def there definitely should be some average height of that entire uh, if if we pick all the people's if we collect the sample of heights and that data set if we see that data set when we calculate we'll get definitely get an average or mean height that we put here and then we know there are many people who are very uh, tall and there are many people who are very short and there are many people who are very near to this correct okay so those ones who are very tall very short are the extreme ones and the ones who are very near to this and and slowly steadily we see deviation from this average correct that is like upwards and downwards am i right yes and then what we decide is we can put this in some distribution that is normal distribution that's it that's mm. that 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 can be a very realistic example isn't it so could you just explain again once more see we are looking around ourselves in a particular area and we collected sample of heights of many people we really know that when we collect when we calculated the average of average height of that particular sample set we got some average okay let's say 10 feet let's mm -hmm. say sorry 5.5 feet is the average height correct yeah now see of course it's practical and it's very realistic that there can be a deviation from the average am i right yes yes probably there can be some extreme cases we see we see some are 7.25 height and we see some are 3 feet height so when we when we see that some are going upwards than this we keep them at the extreme right correct yeah that is at the tail and we see that there are many people who are very short we keep them at the extreme left that is at the tail so these are the extreme outliers am i right hello Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please. Are are you understanding, Abhijit? Yeah. See, there can be extreme. Ah, uh, there can be okay. some people. Sorry. Extreme outliers are understood. Yeah. Yeah. So I put them at the end, seven point two five, or let's say three point five, and I see many people who are very near to five point five as well, five point four, five point six. But I know, like, I will definitely see some deviation from this exact average. Am I right? so when i yes. put all those data rightwards and leftwards and i see some deviation and there's a an average to this data and i see some outliers as well then i what comes into my mind i can distribute this data normally in this way correct with one mean yes. and variance and uh, with one mean and variance am i right yeah that's what is that's what is nothing but normal distribution that's what now you will be reading all this in words i i explained this practically that's it okay so let's see normal distribution is important for many reasons many of the random variables so i just randomly picked average height i randomly arranged all those things here and this became a normal distribution that means i can now say that my data my random variable which is like here i am taking height as a random variable is normally distributed having a mean that is my in my case that is 5.5 i'm putting mu here mu means population mean and there is a variance as well am i right that is some deviation and let's say i keep a deviation of 2 uh, like uh, some 1 inch what i'm keeping 1 inch 1 inch up and 1 inch down that's it it makes sense or not yeah it makes sense yeah that's it oh. when you see this normal distribution do you see this is this is a symmetry am i right there is no skewness at all correct mm -hmm. so skewness is zero in this case skewness can only exist when you see something less than something or more than something and i have already explained you about the kurtosis kurtosis is always 3 that is standard okay this is the measure of how flat the distribution is recall that excess kurtosis whatever you want to check you have to subtract 3 from that and you have to check the excess kurtosis correct yes and what does kurtosis say it shows about it tells about the shape of the distribution now sure. linear combination of normal distributed random variables is also normally distributed of course and the probabilities of outcomes farther above and below the mean get smaller and smaller but do not go zero that means yeah what i say is i see lot of data may be concentrated here and i see some rarity some one or two guys are 7.25 one or two guys are 3.5 and i put them in the extreme ends correct yeah that means that's that that's that's it that is that is that's it about normal distribution what more you want nothing more than that finish 
it's a symmetry and you see mean median mean mean median mode equal here now let's go ahead now something we need to discuss about univariate distributions and uh, multivariate normal distribution see univariate is i just took one variable here that is height correct yes and if i pick if i pick a stock and i see i check the returns of that stock and i i see uh, 10 years data and i put an average and uh, i put some devi uh, standard deviation or variance that's a univariate distribution that's it finished but if i speak about multivariate i take two variables right and i see the correlation and covariance between them so when i talk about two variables and when i talk about the relationship between two variables the correlation the covariance how one of the variables is affecting the another variable what kind of distribution comes into picture the univariate but i can no 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 how univariate bivariate comes into picture abhijit you said how many distributions no no abhijit univariate is just one variable here my example was height or returns of some stocks if okay. i take two variables two variables then bivariate if i take more than two variables multivariate bivariate is also a form of or uh, or it comes under the purview of multivariate correct sure sure yeah, understood and if if i write ax plus by okay so here there are two variables x and y uh, so these variables one can one have a, one can have an impact because of other that means change in this can have an impact on this as well let's say correct so we study that closely in with the, with the help of multivariate normal distribution you will never find anywhere this one in your entire cfl level 1 curriculum it's very tough I, it's a 3d figure actually very very tough to draw multivariate normal distribution and it's a very complicated mathematical function and mathematical concept so that's the reason why they have not gone forward and uh, further with this they have restricted that so we will also not go further just be for the sake of understanding or understanding that okay hello this sir okay okay so i'll just write some notes about this abhijit uh, so uh, to give you some better clarity you just uh, follow that since i cannot keep you like guessing for many things uh, like that I will just make the things comfortable for you. So everything is right now, sound and everything. Perfect. Yeah, a univariate distribution. Distribution is defined. As a distribution. that involves just one random variable for instance we wish to model the distribution of returns on an asset such as holding of stock such as such a model would be univariate distribution correct uh, that's what it is distribution of returns on an asset uh, such as holding of stocks such a model would be univariate 
and I gave the example of height as well, correct? That was also perfect example. Okay, Abhijit. Yeah, so we were looking at uh, binomial distribution, uniform and normal distributions. Okay, those were all examples of univariate distribution. Now shall we take multivariate? Okay, now. If you see the graph or figure of this multivariate distribution, you, you yourself will not understand. OK, because it will be like a 3D figure. Very tough to understand that one. Most of the uh, computerized functions like they use the system for uh, doing all this. So it describes the probabilities. So I'm speaking about probability is not probability. Probabilities for a group of continuous random variables. We were discussing for univariate that time we used normal dis binomial distribution, but here we are using continuous random variables, correct? Okay. Particularly if the individual individual various variables follow a normal distribution. That means all the individual variables should follow normal distribution. OK. Yeah. And each variable has its own mean and variance. That means you are taking many variables. Those are normally distributed. OK. And you are disc you are like uh, seeing the probabilities of those uh, like various variables and you are put you are distributing them with some mean and variances that there comes the multivariate distribution, correct? Mm, OK, because every variable has a different mean and variance, no? Oh, no of course, of course, every uh, variable. Is yeah. So in this regard, the strength of the relationship between variables correlation is very important. So here the problem what we faced with univariate distribution was we were not able to correlate there. OK, that means there can be some interdependency now. See if you are only looking at height univariate, but height, weight and waste. What I'm speaking, looking at height, weight and waste. If I take these three variables, then can you can then you then sorry, then three variables no? multivariate? That's what. We will not go deeper into this because they have they haven't given much details about this, so maybe they'll be covering afterwards. So in this regard, the strength. of the relationship between the variables that is correlation I'm speaking about and I always, always use this word is very important. So as uh, like uh, what we see is a linear combination of two normal random variables is another random variable. Now, so y is equal to a plus bx. This is a linear combination. Am I right? Yes. So that gives rise to some another variable as well. Correct. OK. Because see, we see the relationship between them or if if 
a plus a x plus b y is equal to c. So what happens if I put x value, y value, and I have a and b value, I can get c values, na? Okay. So now, uh, like uh, multivariate distribution, uh, some some important things you should understand. Uh, we will see. I am writing some points here. Please follow this. So correlation defines the strength of the linear, linear relationship between any two random variables. So for us to define a multi multivariate distribution, let's say we have n variables. Okay, to define a multivariate distribution uh, let's say n with for n variables. We need following. First, the individual mean value of each asset. That means mu one, mu two, mu three mu n minus 1 mu n okay and then second we want list of vari variances of return for each asset Okay, and also what we want, Abhijit, third one, we want pairwise return correlations, correct? Okay. Pairwise return correlations. That is n into n minus 1 by 2 correlations in total. Correct. So what what is the distinguishing feature between univariate and multivariate normal distributions if they give you MCQ? Answer is the number of variables involved is an obvious answer. Correlation. Correlation is distinguishing feature. Okay. Okay. Correct. Okay. So suppose if I ask you a question, uh, suppose we wish to model the distribution of two asset returns. To yeah. describe the return multivariate distribution, we need two means, two variances, and just one correlation. Correct? Oh, agreed. So, like, uh, I'm just putting some words here, and we just uh, end up this one now. So, we want to model distribution. Just a second, Abhijit. Just give me a second. I'm taking some more. How is like how is like uh, in Mumbai some rains have, have like yeah, was it raining there? It's pleasant. Pleasant huh? here also it's very pleasant now. Yeah. Suppose we want to we wish to model the distribution for two asset returns. So uh, to describe the return multivariate distribution, we want two means, two variances. And one correlation. Correct. So, yeah. and just one. So, we will just put 
like actually the formula is with minus, not like minus n into n plus one by two. I mean, textbook also it's written so minus. So what I'm explaining is all there here. Okay, that is n into n plus one by two. Okay, sorry. That is 0.5, okay. So what we'll do here, we have two, two returns now. So we'll, we'll two assets, correct? So we'll take two into two minus one by two. We'll get what? One, correct? We got one correlation or not? Uh -huh. Yes. If we have five assets, five right. assets. That formula you talk about. Right? Yeah, five means five variances and ten correlations. Correct? Yeah. How? Five into five minus one by two. So they may ask you such kind of questions. Just write out, make a note of this. Everything. We'll move forward. Yeah, I just made a note of it as we speak. Done with this. This concept is done. Okay. So more than one variables, generally you will be looking forward for a portfolio where, where whereby you will be taking more than one uh, security, correct? To make a portfolio, isn't it so? Now. <sighs> so Abhijit, can we uh, like uh, this confidence interval, just a second, we'll take some good amount of time. Can we take this session tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I mean, we can take it in the next class. Tomorrow or day after, I'll just confirm. Yeah, I thought of continuing, but I'm very tired now. Tomorrow, I, I have holiday, but you are not. Just a second, I'll just cancel calling you two minutes.